okay, let's talk about the customers thing now, because that's always the question that everyone asks the most, right? How do I get more customers? How do I get consistent customers? Not getting reach and orders because I'm 16. Okay, let me talk about that one first. That's an assumption that you're making. If you say I'm not getting orders or customers because I'm 16, that you it means you're making the assumption that no teenagers ever sell anything. Is that true? Is that objectively true? No, it's not. There are plenty of teenagers <laughs> who sell things on the side, right? While they're at school. So don't let that assumption hold, your, hold you back. If you're not getting orders, it's always because of marketing. It's not, it's mostly not because of your baking. That can definitely play a role in how you present your baking to people. You know, if you just post photos that are completely blurry and are taken with the flash at night and everything just looks a bit weird or your camera lens was dirty, you, you know, your phone camera lens, it doesn't have to be a fancy camera, but then then it, it's not going to look appetizing. It's not going to look professional. Go to my, go to my profile. There's a, a story highlights icon that says photo tips. Check out that. Don't just take a photo haphazardly, middle of the night with a flash on. It just doesn't look professional. It doesn't look appetizing. Baked goods and food in general looks the best in natural light. So it's super important for you to show those things. And then also, as I, as I spoke now about the marketing, you need to understand that a successful home baking business is 30% great baking. Your baking does matter, but it's only 30% great baking and 70% great business strategy. A successful home bakery is 30% great baking and 70% great business strategy. So it, you can have the best bakes in the world, but if you don't make the time to learn about effective marketing and how clients think and what makes them buy, then you are going to have a very difficult time. And it, that whole ratio of 30 to 70% explains completely why you get these bakeries that have average baked goods, right? They're too sweet, they're dry, they, you know they don't taste as good as yours. But they have made the effort to pour their time into learning that 70% of marketing and business strategy, and that's why they are successful. Okay, so I know that marketing seems like this boring and overwhelming, confusing, complicated thing, but it's really not. It's fascinating stuff. You just learn about the human brain and what, peop what makes people make choices. And I have a blog post to help you with this. Yay, <laughs> another blog post. So you can go to my profile, click the link, um, click the button that takes you to my blog, and then scroll down a little bit in the search bar, type in marketing. Then you will get my post about marketing so you can learn the, the basic foundations of marketing to help you in your business. Okay, so that is mostly what you need to get orders. But then to get consistent orders is like the next level question, right? How do you get consistent orders? How do you get orders every week and not just one? There was someone who said, I'm only getting one order per week. If you want to increase that, you are going to need to, to do two things. First thing you need to do, you need to have systems in place to bring in a steady flow of new clients every month or every week. Okay, that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is to have systems and strategies in place to make sure that those clients have an amazing experience with you so that they will order from you again and speak positively about your business. Okay, so the first thing we spoke about getting, um, getting a constant inflow of new clients, please don't spend all of your time on Instagram. Okay, Instagram can be super beneficial for your business. Yes, it absolutely can. But don't just um, think, oh, reels are the answer, you know, or um, doing an Instagram live is the answer. It's, it's not. It's so much more nuanced than that. If you want to get consistent, a consistent flow of clients every month, that has to do with your, your niche, first of all, tremendously to do with your niche. A, a niche is basically not baking anything for any occasion because then you don't start out because every other baker bakes anything for every occasion, anything for any occasion. If you do that, you're not going to stand out. You need to define a niche for yourself. And that means that you, it's more than specialization because you can, for example, say, oh, I specialize in cupcakes, but then there are loads of other people doing cupcakes. You know, it, that doesn't help. It, a niche is about the problem that you solve for people. It's about the problem that your clients are experiencing in regards to baked goods that no one else is solving yet. And you are now going to solve that problem. And think about this for yourself as well. Look at all the ba other bakers out there and the other home bakers, the big bakeries, etc., etc. What is irritating you about the way that they are doing things? Like it should be this way. 
it, it should be like this. It should be like that. Look at them, analyze, and see what, what irks you. What, what would you do differently? What do you want to change in this industry or whatever? And for me, it was seeing all these beautiful cakes, you know, but they don't taste good. They, they look way better than they taste. And at the end of the day, baking is about flavor. At the end of the day, we, you know, we look at things with our eyes, but at the end of the day, we eat them with our mouths. You know, you don't eat with your eyes, you eat with your mouth. <laughs> And appearance is important, yes, but if it's lacking in flavor, it's lacking in quality, then people aren't going to order again. They're going to have a negative experience at the end of the day. So that's what was frustrating me, that you get all these, all these gorgeous bakes, but they don't taste good. And that was how my niche was born. I saw this problem that I wanted to solve. So look at the whole baking industry, look at what other people are baking and see what problem you want to solve for them. I have another student, for example, Lizzie, she's in Brisbane, and she is now having major success with New York style cookies. I know that it's trending and all of that, but at the same time, just no one in her area is baking that stuff. These cookies that are not dry and old, but are like scrumptious and loaded and decadent. You know, that's, that's a problem that she's solving. People want super indulgent cookies and no one was was doing that no one was helping solve this need for people okay so look out specialization can be an answer to a problem that you are seeing absolutely but it's 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 more about the problem that you solve okay so don't specialize and then only you know make something that you're not passionate about let's say for example that that no one's baking vegan cakes in your area yet but you don't want to bake vegan things but now you feel you kind of have to because you have to specialize no, <laughs> a niche is, is not just about what neither is out there. It's also about what you want to bake. Okay, actually, let me stop talking about this and just tell you about a guide that I have. I have a free guide to help you to find the perfect niche for your home bakery. Go to that, follow the prompt, sign up. It's free. And then you can download my free guide in the free resource library about defining a niche for your home bakery. Okay, no strings attached. You can just go download it. will help you tremendously so you don't just have to kind of wing it um, but that you actually know step by step how to define your niche so we're speaking about getting customers um another way of, get, of getting a constant inflow of new customers is creating a website you don't have to have a website to start your business you can start and already get some money coming in but if you are serious about turning this into a part-time or full-time business you're going to have to create a website it doesn't have to be this gigantic enormous big deal you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on it so not necessary. There's this amazing platform called Wix, W-I-X, and they are amazing. They um, have all these templates that you can use, and it's a very easy drag and drop situation. You can seriously build your own website in an afternoon, really. <laughs> Don't hype it up to be this ginormous thing in your head. It's really simple. It's really not that bad. And they have so many videos. Whenever you get stuck on something, you can just watch a video, and they show you exactly what to do. Simple as that. So what I recommend that you do is to set a date and time on your calendar. Like on this day, at that time, I'm going to start working on my website. And then tell your friends and your family about it so they can keep you accountable and plan their schedules around that. And just start doing this. Don't wait to feel like building a website. Don't wait for it to become less scary because then you're going to be waiting forever. You don't have to feel like doing something to do something. If I waited to, you know, feel unscared, if that's a word, unscared, confident, I suppose is a better word. If I waited to feel confident before I started my home bakery, then I would have still been sitting on my couch now, okay? So we don't have to feel like doing something to do it. We're gonna be waiting forever. Feeling scared and feeling overwhelmed and all of that stuff is human and it's normal, but letting it hold you back is a choice. There's some tough love for you. Feeling scared, feeling unconfident, all of that stuff is human and it's normal, but letting it stop you is a choice. Okay, you can feel scared and do things anyway. You can feel unconfident and do things anyway. Over time, it will be less scary. Over time, it becomes, you become more confident, but don't wait for those things to appear inside you before you start doing something, okay? <laughs>